Okay, I see blowing snow sideways. Awesome. And down here, see there's ice. So it looks like there's going to be ice under the snow. So come with me as I go to the backyard. And I might just fall on my head, on my butt, my buttock. I do have some things I bought to put on shoes for the ice. No, those are snowshoe things. Those are not what I thought they are. They sell those where you can um, strap them onto your shoes, on the bottoms of your shoes, and they're like spikes, ice spikes, and you can walk on the ice. I do not have those. So let's see what happens. I'm not going out this way. My car is in the, dry, in the uh, garage, so it's not iced over. Doesn't look like Chief's car is iced over. I guess there's no ice on there. Nope. No, he's good. So, that's good. So, what ha we had like, I think we had like two inches of snow first. And then it got warmer. And it started melting. And it rained a little bit. And then the temperatures dropped um, early this morning. Down into like, I think in the 20s. So, between the rain and the melting snow... There's going to be a lot out there. Can you tell? I don't want to go back there. i got to see. i got to check on the chickens, make sure they're okay. See, Decide if I'm going to let them outside or not. Um, it looks as though the wind is coming straight from the west, and it's going east. So that's good for the chickens because the coop blocks a lot of the wind from the west right now. So, I guess. Tam, stop putting it off. Let's see what's going on. Here we go. Here we go. Well, here I go. Of laughs out of it. Oh, I should bring water for them. Chickens need more water in the winter time. To be able to uh, to regulate their temperature, so I'm gonna bring a water bottle with me. Oh, he changed the the doorknob. Uh oh, wait, I can't get the door open. Uh oh. Oh, this is no good. Oh no, either it's frozen shut. Shoot, I have to go out the other way. All right, here we go. Here we go. One of my mottos is don't be afraid to fail. So this might be a big fail. Let's rock. Oh boy, guys, here we go. Oh no, the canopy collapsed. <sighs> here we go. Yeah, oh good, there's crunchy snow underneath, so it's not, or on top, so it's not slippery, but i got to go in and handle the canopy, oh no, yeah, I said to you guys, hey, shake off the stuff off your trees and shrubs, and there's not really anything anymore on the trees and shrubs, but i got a lot of snow on the canopy, so probably ice too. I gotta get underneath there and take care of that. But like I said, the chickens are not gonna they're not gonna understand if I'm late. They don't get it. They don't care. <coughs> right, Jazzy? They don't care if I'm I've got issues in that human world. Uh oh. Okay. <coughs> no. There we go. Open. Hi guys. I know it's crazy, isn't it? Okay, your water. Food. Gonna put more food in there. Snow, snow blew in from here. 
Hey Jazzy, how's it going? Let's see. Is the water frozen? Probably. I'm gonna move this mailbox over here to cover that gap. Keep the wind from coming in. Okay, let yeah, me have water to drink. I'll keep this water in here. Hi guys. This water is not frozen. Good. So you can see where some of the snow has come in, blown in just through the cracks here. They do have the coop they can go into to stay warm. I am not going to open that door, though, until I manage that tarp. I'm going to manage the tarp, I'm going to move the mailbox to keep that from blowing. And I'm getting breezes. Let's look inside the coop. I'm going to do the coop. I'm not going to do that with you guys. See? Garage is almost done. That's not a roof, though. <laughs> they don't have shingles on there. It's just tar paper. Okay. This is not frozen. Okay. Hi, guys. I can see indentations in the coop. Oh, close the door, please. Close the door. Good. I can see indentations in the straw where they have been hanging out. Because it's warmer in here. The breeze isn't blowing in. They have a good spot they can shelter. So I don't even know if I'm gonna open that big door yet. The big door. They're all hanging out. Or or they're hanging out waiting to go outside, which is kind of goofy. Alright, so I got my work cut out for me. My list right now is to get the stuff off the tarp, move the mailbox, and then I'll open the um door, the pop door to the outside, and they can come and go if they want to. Some of the bigger breeds, but hi Orange, I know, I'm just talking to the people, okay? I know. I don't know that you're going to want to go outside though, because you're just even in the coop. So in the coop it says that it is a little bit over 20, and what they'll do is they'll nestle into the straw. So I'll come in here after I, when I scoop the poop, I will fluff the straw up a little bit more. And then these barrel, bales of straw keep the wind from like, or the cold from radiating into them, to their area. And they fluff up in the straw. All right, time to stop talking, start working. Have a good Saturday guys, take it easy out there. Leave extra time for your gates, your doors, your cars to be frozen. And uh, I'll catch you later. Hey. It's me, Tammy. Hello. <laughs> the lace or the gardener. Oh my God. I'm all bundled up. Scarfs help. Scarfs help because they keep my face and my mouth warm. But my gloves, and my gloves, they're soaking wet and they're super cold. So I'm not wearing them right now because it's just too much. Too much for my fingers. So I took them off. I'm going to bring them in and dry them off. I've got spare pairs and I have to invest in some good gloves. If you know any good gloves, let me know because I need to do that. Um, so I have a lot of different sayings like, uh, don't be afraid to fail, which I was thinking about that because sometimes I think about stuff as I am scooping the chicken litter in there, scooping the poop. I get thoughts because it's something that is like a rote task and my brain is like oh this is a great opportunity to think about this or that or the other so <laughs> in today's poop scooping thoughts I was thinking about that phrase um, don't be afraid to fail so I probably need to asterisk it Gosh, it's cold over here. oh there you go it's not cold here it's not blowing um, I probably need to preface that or asterisk it with as long as it's not livestock. Because don't take chances with the livestock. Because you should be afraid to fail with livestock. You should learn about it from people who know what they're doing. And uh, and then go with it at a small scale. And then when you get that small scale per portion of livestock up and going. And you're keeping them alive and healthy. And you know what to do if they get sick or not. Um, then move on to the next type of livestock. So 
Don't be afraid to fail is good for plants and gardens because it's not a beating heart, you know? But when it comes to livestock, don't be afraid to fail is, do be afraid to fail for that one. And then the other one is burn it to learn it. And that's, that's specifically for me when I'm learning how to cook because I, I wasn't really taught how to cook and I didn't know and um, yeah. The microwave didn't really, doesn't really count, I don't think. But the third phrase that I always use, because I tend to be one in the past and I'm working on it. I'm getting better, I'm not perfect yet, of course. Obviously, I'm not perfect yet. But um, I tend to have a really low like threshold for, or tolerance for uh, struggle. Like if I am trying to fix something and it's not going well, <laughs> in the past, I try and try, and then I'd be like, ah, I can't do this. And then the chief, Dave, would come and help me out and say, well, that's because you're using the wrong tool, or hey, would you like me to help you with that? Instead of me asking for help, I would struggle with it, and my tolerance was really low for, um, for the struggle. So one thing that uh, in the last, gosh, at least two years I've been saying to myself is, difficult is not impossible. Difficult is not impossible. Difficult, diff how many words is it? Difficult is not impossible. Four words. Four words. Difficult is not impossible. So as I'm struggling with something and I'm like, this is so hard, my brain says, this is so hard, I remind my brain that difficult is not impossible. The other part is to think about the motivations. Why are you doing this difficult thing? Why are you doing this hard thing? Why are you struggling for this? So for me, I was wrestling with the um, tarp for the chickens that covered a little bit of their outside run. And I started, my brain started throwing up. Oh, it's cold in here. My brain started throwing up. This is so hard. This is so hard. And I was able to answer back, difficult is not impossible. What difficult is not impossible? Oh, got a call. Okay, bye. Nope, I'll just show you. Here it is. So I managed to get all the ice and snow and water off of there and I'm so excited. Got a call now. Talk to you later. Okay, so whoever was calling me is not calling me now. All right, so the phrase was four words. Difficult is not impossible. Difficult is not impossible. Struggle is okay. And that's like how the butterflies get out of the chrysalises and stuff, is they have to do the struggle. That's how young adults get out and work on their own, is they have to do the struggle. It has to be their struggle, not ours. So anyway, I did manage to clear off all the ice and snow and water from the tarp. So now it can blow freely. <laughs> but at least it's not collapsed anymore. And I put the poles, um, I did put the poles back where they belong. This one's coming out again. I don't have rebar posts hanging onto them. So I'll probably have to rework that a little bit, but at least the, that crisis part is averted. Eventually, we're gonna have a, a hard structure where we don't have to worry about these tarps. It's gonna be covered over the run, but we do have the really nice coop <clears throat> where they can go inside <clears throat> and get away from the wind. And they will nestle up. I saw them yesterday, it was cool. They were, they were nestled up inside the, uh, right up in here, oh, this area, nestled up in the straw inside. Um, there were like five or six of them. Oh, Elise is in there right now. And they have a place from the wind. I did open the pop door to the outside. I wasn't sure if I was going to. So I didn't really feel wind coming in from that area, from the east. There's a little bit of breeze coming in from the top, which I'm not in love with. Um, but there's nothing I can do about that right now. They do have protected area from the wind. They could go underneath that, um, this little flange thing I've got of linoleum. Um, I was trying to keep wind like down low, but there's not wind coming from down below. It's just from up top. They can go in there and they can go in the straw as well. All right, dudes, it's super cold. And um, I would go in that door there, <laughs> but it seems to be frozen or locked shut. So I have to talk to the chief and have him fix it. Guess what? Honey? Guess what, honey? 
I need you to fix something. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm frozen. Don't come up tight if you don't need to, really. Seriously, it's not worth it. Unless you have livestock. If you've got livestock, then you got to do it. But otherwise, I would not go outside. Because like I said, the wind is blowing sideways and it's snowing wind. And ice is underneath the snow. So, and gates and doors can be locked. Oops. Make sure it closes tight. Oh, that was the one thing too is <laughs> eventually I want to talk about how to position gates. And that's like part of the garden coaching or the homestead coaching that I would provide if you ever wanted to sign up is consider how your your prevalent wind blows and then make sure your your gates to your yards close that way make sure like if we put a gate heat if we put a door because ours usually come from the south and the west when we're using this door so it slams shut easily if we put a door here and made it open this way no this whatever be careful how your gates open Make it easier for yourself. I can't believe I'm freezing. Goodbye. Okay,